And now back to two and a half mullets. Welcome to Five Points of Articulation, where I review action figures and then articulate five points to help you decide if you want to add that figure to your collection. The five points I discuss are packaging, presentation, posability, playability, and price. I'm Jason, and if you enjoy my content, please like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube rigmarole. Today we're taking a look at the DC Multiverse McFarlane Collector Edition Return of Superman and Crypto. Starting off with the packaging and Crypto comes in an extra wide window box. I mean Superman and Crypto come in an extra wide window box. Because it's a Collector Edition it has silver foil. It also says McFarlane Collector Edition running down the side. We also see more of that foil on the actual side side. This one is number 9 in the series. Down here is the UPC for those looking for them in store. And on the back is some really cool artwork that in no way shape form represents the Superman that we're getting. I mean, who on earth would think of this looking at this? But judging the figure in the box is the next category. This category is the box itself. And honestly, where's Crypto? They put his name on there. But was there seriously no picture of the two of them together? Forget McFarlane. I'm pretty sure this was made by Jimmy Fallon. Because it's a box of lies! Since only half of the advertised characters appear on the box, for packaging I'm giving Superman and Crypto half a point. Moving on to presentation, and this Superman is seven and a quarter inches tall and three and a half inches wide. Normally I wouldn't measure the width, but just look at this guy. The body was originally used for the Dark Knight Returns Superman, and it made sense there because Frank Miller was making his Batman and Superman larger than life caricatures. I get the 90s Superman was a bit over the top because, well, it was the 90s and everything was over the top. So by that logic, I do see where they're coming from, but as an action figure, the proportions here are preposterous. As base bodies for Superman goes, these are the four that McFarlane uses, and as we'll see during playability, this one really strikes a happy medium. It's larger than Life Flight the comic, without looking silly. And honestly, with most McFarlane Superman figures using that buck, it just kind of feels like this is the default. That also includes the face. It's been their standard Superman face all the way back to Action Comics 1000. It's the face they used for the bearded version, and now the face they used for the mullet version. With that level of consistency, it's all the more baffling why they they went this direction, especially with these colors. I always associate mullet Superman with darker colors. In fact, side by side with Supergirl and you can see that her blue is lighter than his. Here they've gone with a more Christopher Reeve blue, which I love for a classic Superman. In fact, it's the same color scheme they'll be using for classic Superman using the page puncher's body. To McFarlane's credit, they did paint the belt loops this time. Zooming in though, you can definitely see some paint slop on mine. Not just on the belt, but honestly all over the figure. They're just a bunch of little chips and streaks throughout. One thing I will say in this body's favor, though, is that unlike other Superman figures, it doesn't have any superfluous lines or panels or things like that. So in that regard, it feels more true to the comic. But could you just imagine this guy as Clark Kent? In my five-way verse, as I joked that this guy was too big for Clark? Lois! This time, it's not exactly that far off. Personally, I think this figure looks ridiculous, but I'm going to be generous. And for presentation, give this Superman half a point. Moving on to posability, and it's been a while since I did the original Dark Knight Returns Superman, so it's worth revisiting. Because of the mullet, he can't look up. He can, however, look down a bit. Pretty decent tilt, and of course, side to side. Moving down to the Man of Tomorrow can raise his arms just over 90 degrees. He has rotator cuffs, but I'm not getting a whole lot of forward and back out of him. And then moving down, he only has single jointed swivel elbows. He does, however, have McFarlane wrist balls that can swivel and hinge either up and down or side to side. Shifting to the torso and he has a diaphragm joint and a dumbbell waist. He can arch back this far, which is great. For perspective, here's the flying pose you can get him in. Unfortunately, I'm not getting any forward at all. He does get tilt, but not quite as much as usual. No problem, however, with twist. Below the bright yellow belt and Superman has McFarlane style hips. He can kick about 45 degrees, but do a pretty good split. He also has much better twist in the hip than usual. Traveling down the leg, he has double jointed knees that don't get the deepest bend because of how bulky the legs are. He also has toe articulation and McFarlane ankles that can swivel, hinge, and like shifting from business to party, 
pivot. The chunkier the proportions, the more limited the articulation. For poseability, I'm giving this Superman half a point. Moving on to playability, and Superman comes with a trading card. Pause here if you want to know what it says. Spoiler alert, it's just Superman's origin. That trading card comes on one of these fancy trading card holders. I usually complain about these being a substitute for added value, but not today. For one thing, we've got the tried and true figure stand, and there's also a nice set of open hands. Those open hands are going to come in very handy for petting Superman's best friend, Golly! No, 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 not Jimmy Olsen. Crypto the Super Dog. This is a wonderful addition to the Superman family. He's the main reason I, and probably a lot of other people, wanted this set. McFarlane sculptors did an incredible job of capturing athletic dog anatomy. Just look at all those muscles. For the most part, he is a solid figurine, but there is some interesting engineering there. Take, for example, his left front paw. It's a separate piece that's been glued on, which suggests to me that if they wanted to, they could put a different leg there in a different pose. On that note, the head does turn side to side, and the collar, which is perfect, is a separate piece holding down this cloth goods cape. It gives me a lot of hope that it won't be too long before we're also seeing Ace the Bat Hound. But playability is more than just accessories, even great accessories like crypto. It's also about how well your figures play with others. Starting with my only other molded Superman, and here we have Man of Steel and Total Justice by Kenner. Based on these figures, you can definitely see why I associate this look with darker colors. But based on this figure, maybe the McFarlane one's proportions aren't that bad after all. For the rest of the Justice League, and here we have Nightfall Batman, who looks downright wayfish by comparison. Year 2 is a better match in that department. Otherwise, and here we have Flashpoint Flash, Endless Winter Aquaman with Flashpoint's head, Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, Green Lantern by NECA, and Justice League Classic Icons Wonder Woman by DC Direct. For some Superman villains, and here we have Battlesuit Lex Luthor, Bizarro, who's smaller by comparison, General Zod, Injustice 2 Brainiac, and Superboy Prime. Superboy Prime brings us to Con L Superboy and the rest of the Superman family. Oh, so you think reversing the order will get you off the hook? That includes Future's End Superman, Jonathan Kent, and the Target exclusive Supergirl. But I know what you're thinking. What about Crypto? For some other dogs, and here he is with the NECA Alien 3 Spike, here he is with the Lannard Alien 3 Spike, and here he is with Miss Lion. As for how well he scales with other Superman figures, from smallest to largest, here we have DC Icons, Mezco 112 Collective, DC Universe Classics by Mattel, the DC Collectibles DC Essentials, the Through the Ages box set John Byrne version from DC Direct, the DC vs. Dark Horse 2-pack by NECA, Action Comics 1000, and Hush, a story which Crypto actually did appear in. For a relative scale, here they are with Pizza Spidey and the Spectacular Spider-Man, and as always, here's Superman with Stealth Iron Man. Mullet Bros? Mullet Bros. Mullet Bros! But deep down, I know what you're really excited for. Head swaps. In this case, though, maybe it'd be more appropriate to say body swaps. First up, and for a really interesting one, here we have NECA. You'll need to get creative because the pegs don't match. But overall, I do think this is a pretty decent combination. An argument could be made that the head might be a bit too big. But to my eye, it still does have that 90s comic book feel. All the way around, and again, you'll need to get creative because of the pegs. I will say because this face is a bit more stylized I don't mind this combination as much, and the flesh tones are a great match. Moving over to DC Multiverse, and here we have Action Comics 1000. Personally, I would have been perfectly happy if this had been the figure they gave us. It most closely resembles the picture on the box anyway. Least ways to my eye, the colors are right, though I know this buck is a bit too scrawny for some. Other way around, and again, it's the same face, just with different hair. As we'll see in a bit, it's also the same head used for Rebirth. Next, we have Rebirth. Obviously, the mullet on the Rebirth suit doesn't make a lot of sense. Even so, put a pin in this one, because we're going to come back to it. Otherwise, for those of you who like the Rebirth head on this body, here's how it looks in this color scheme. Definitely a lot more classic, and the skin tones match up just fine. For the original use of this body, and here's Dark Knight Returns. If you like this body and think it's appropriate for this Superman, this color scheme is much better. Even the skin tones work well enough. Only downside is the lack of painted belt loops. The crazy thing is they used this color scheme for the platinum version of Mullet Superman, but with bright kryptonite green
clean skin instead. I don't have a lot of hope for this one, but here's Page Punchers. With the classic Superman coming out soon with this body, it's a great preview of what that combo is going to look like. I don't really know how I feel about it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Other way around, and definitely not. This head is already on the small side. On this body, it looks comical. Next up, and here we have Hush. This one is really good. You'll need to do something about the mismatched skin tones, but overall, this body just feels a lot more appropriate to me. I do think it can be improved on, though, which we'll be looking at later. Other way around, and again, you're going to have to deal with that mismatched skin tone. I'd also recommend finding a longer peg. For a similarly bright blue boy, and here we have Action Comics 1, I'm guessing this isn't a combination anyone's all that interested in, but I could see a lot of you liking this. The bright colors and style of the face looks very retro, and since this head is larger, it's much more proportionate to the body. For another long-haired Superman, and here's Dark Knight's Death Metal, now this I like. If you're gonna have a rock star Superman, the mullet definitely puts it in a very specific time period, and combined with the overall aesthetic, it's just a lot of fun. Other way around, and this is pretty fun too, and the skin tones are a perfect match. Of course, we've got to look at the solar suit. Obviously, this isn't exactly like the 90s costume. You'd also need to repaint the neck. Either way, it's still a pretty good starting point for a custom. Other way around, and well, here you go. And then for one last black costume, here we have the Snyder Cut. Just like the last one, this is a departure from the 90s comic, but I think it still looks pretty cool. Conversely, though, hasn't Henry Cavill suffered enough? Just because it piqued my curiosity, though, here's the mulleted head on the blue and red body. Again, a departure, but a welcome one. Now, remember I said I wanted to come back to Rebirth? What do you think about this? It uses the body from the Rebirth Superman that comes in the Ultraman 2-pack, and the trunks from the Superman that comes in the Doomsday 2 2 pack. It's bigger in bulk than Action Comics 1000, which I know will make a lot of you happy, and the colors are ever so slightly darker than Hush, which makes me happy. I do want to find a more appropriate cape, because the cut of Rebirth really doesn't work for this version, but when I do, I think this will be my definitive molded Superman. But hey, swap out the regular Rebirth head, and this is a pretty great regular Superman too. Between the head swap potential and how universally compatible with other Superman figures Crypto is, for playability I'm giving this set one whole point. This leaves us with nothing left to discuss but the price. As a McFarlane Collector Edition, this set's $30, which I think you're going to feel differently about based on why you want it. If all you want is crypto, that's kind of steep. On the other hand, so few cryptos have been made that they mostly exist on the aftermarket and are a lot more expensive. If you only want the figure for the head, then it's cheaper than buying a third-party pre-painted one. And hey, if you want both, that makes them $15 each. And I'm sure that there are people out there who genuinely love this body sculpt and are happy to get it. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but for price, I'm giving Superman and Crypto one whole point for a still not so super total of 3.5 out of 5. Who's your favorite super pet? Sound off in the comments below. Those open hands are going to come in very handy for petting Superman's <laughs> If you like this video, check out one of these. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back again real soon, but until then, play nice and have fun.